Hi, Jeff Spira here again. Uh, this time we're in my uh, my boat building shop. Actually, it's my garage, but <laughs> uh, I want to talk to you today about boat building tools. Now, this is just kind of a first look at some of the tools I think they're important to have when you build a boat. Um, I'm going to branch off into each of these tools in future videos uh, where I explain how to you know, how to buy them, uh, how, how to restore them if that's, uh, a, you know, if they're, you know, kind of expensive and you want to buy used and, and restore them. And um, and how you use them in, in future videos. So um, that's what that's what this video is about. Uh, and I thought I'd just kind of show you what I use and uh, you can use it as um, an example for your own shop to make sure that uh, you have sufficient uh, tools to start your boat build. Now I, I work primarily with uh, with hand tools uh, on my builds. I'm no uh, I'm no super carpenter. Trust me, I'm I'm uh, pretty weak when it comes to doing actual carpentry skills. I guess, but um, but anyway, I wanted to show you what I use and and. Uh, and so they'll become of more use to you, I think, when uh, it's time for you to, to build your uh, devices. So, okay, we're going to start with, um, with cutting tools, uh, predominantly saws, uh, I'd like to start with. So to start off, you need a handsaw. Now, this is the one I use. I don't recall, it's a Dissetin. Uh, I don't recall uh, exactly when I got it, but I've had it for 30 or 40 years probably. It's, um, it's a crosscut saw. It's a traditional sort of crosscut saw. It's a pretty good one, uh, and I've used it for years and years. Never sharpened it, never done anything to it, um, and it works just fine for me. So uh, you need a, a good crosscut saw. Uh, for uh, for building boats. The second tool I want to show you is a back saw. This is my back saw. It's a Buck Brothers, um, and it's uh, thinner than a crosscut saw. It's really intended for cross cutting. It's you, although you can use it for some ripping, but it also has this this uh, sturdy uh, ridge on top uh, to hold the saw stiffly because uh, it, it's clamped over the saw. And you use it for making angle cuts and you know what you might use uh, uh, a miter saw for. You would use um, this back saw for. So that's uh, that's that's another tool that's very important, I think, for uh, for cutting. Now, a lot of people may decide that they like the Japanese style saws. The difference is this saw um, cuts when you push, and a Japanese saw cuts when you pull. Now, I like Japanese saws. I, I I'm going to show you one that I use. Um, but and they're intended for precise cuts, just like a back saw. Um, they're thinner than the uh, the back saw, and uh, uh, the blade's much thinner. It's good for for more accuracy. But I don't find them particularly useful for you know making frames. Let's say on on my boats, I I, I uh, where it would be a good saw to do that. I do find them great for making precision cuts. Now, here's what I use as a Japanese pull saw. This is a one I got fairly recently. It's a, it's a modern version. It's a Dewalt. If you notice, the blade on these is very uh, loose. Very, uh, and that's because all the action comes when you pull the saw rather than pushing it. So it doesn't require that you... Uh, that you stiffen the blade because because when you push on it you don't want it to bend <laughs> you know let me try that again there you push on it you don't want it to bend you 
you want it to um, go straight if it's a back saw. But if it's a pull saw, the blade's going to stay straight as you pull it. So uh, this is a version, uh, this is a American made, or I don't know if it's American, made in America, it could be made in China, I don't know, but it's an American version of a Japanese pull saw. And, um, and they, they would be very, uh, very useful uh, in boat building. I use this for making uh, the cuts, for instance, to, um, um, to, for the chine log and for the shear clamp and, and making the smaller, more precise cuts on a boat. Uh, I would use a saw like this uh, rather than use the, uh, the back saw for that. Uh, I'm, I'm also going to um, show you later in this, in this video what power saws I tend to use. Uh, and, uh, you know, we, we'll, we'll talk about that. But right now I'm just kind of in the, in the handsaw end of things. Um, then, then when we start talking about cutting tools, we're going to get into the, you know, the planes and the various uh, edged cutting tools that that you're going to find useful. Beginning, you start with planes. Planes are very important, I think, in building boats, and I, I use them uh, quite a bit. Now, some people will say that they don't, um, which is fine. You, you can not use them. Um, but I, there's really only two planes that I find very useful. One of them is the smoothing plane. Uh, this is mine. It's... Uh, it's a Stanley. I probably bought it new in the uh, 1980s. Um, and I have, I, I, I maintain it. I keep it restored and sharpened and all that. And I use this quite a bit for, uh, for fairing the boat and, and, and cutting uh, uh, various, various things. Again, I'm going to show you how to use this and how to sharpen it and do things like that with it later. But uh, this... Uh, if you talk to Stanley guys, they all say, well, no, you got to get them from back in the 1930s. That's when they were good. These new ones are no good. But, uh, you know, it's it's a useful tool. You can still buy this model, um, smoothing saw or smoothing plane. I don't know what number it is. It says it's made in the USA, but again, this probably came from the 1980s or 70s, perhaps, uh, when I first bought it. Um, and again, I've, this has been a critical item for building, building boats in my shop. So and now the second kind of plane that you're going to need is, is called a block plane. Let me show you that. Uh, this is a, this is a block plane. It's small, it's compact. You can hold it in one hand. I use this, uh, for all the, uh, uh, Fairing, uh, for instance, when I use thinner lumber, like you would for building a smaller boat, anything that's like three quarter inch thick uh, is, uh, I use this, this plane heavily. Um, now these come two ways. This is called, uh, this is, an, I think it's called a nine and a half, the model number, I'm not sure. But, um, and it's, if you can see, it's a standard angle, the angle of the blade, you can see is standard. Now these also come uh, in shallow angle, and they look like this. <sighs> this one is a is a Stanley sixty and a half. If you notice, the blade is a the angle of the blade here is at a much shallower angle than it is here. Um, now originally I got this plane. I I, I started using this plane. I bought it and started using it. Um, to do bamboo fly rods. I used to have a company to do bamboo fly rods and, um, and I bought this one used. And this uh, purple color on Stanley's was I think from the 60s. I, I probably bought it in the 80s, I would say, late 80s, and, uh, and then restored it and uh, use, it, uh, use it for a lot of my boats now. Now, if, if given a choice, I would, I would go with the, the Stanley uh, a higher angle one, and that would be for primarily doing softer woods. If I were going to build boats out of like oak and, and do a lot of end grain planing and stuff like that, I would buy the, the, the low angle version. I think this is a 60 and a half. I think that's the, 
Stanley model number. But the, anyway, in any event, if you look, there, everybody has a, a low angle and a standard angle uh, block plane. Um, I find these very useful. There's some, there's some also more inexpensive versions of these that you can come across. And a lot of times I see them, uh, I've bought them for five bucks and restored them and sold them, you know, and, and uh, given them to people and things like that. They're, they're pretty common in, in some other forms. And I, I'll, I'll probably sh buy one and show you how to restore it yourself and sharpen it and get it get it workable so it's useful as a, as a boat building tool in a future uh, video. But right now, if you have a block plane and a smoothing plane, you've pretty much got it handled uh, for boat building. Another plane that you'll find useful, uh, you may find useful, I don't consider it a necessity, but some guys really like them, are uh, Japanese planes. Here's one. They're typically wood-based, um, and uh, they're typically wood-based, and they and and they're used differently than American planes. American planes are pushed in the direction of the blade, but Japanese planes are actually pulled towards you. Um, it's a it's a it becomes a very useful device. It's precision controlled. You know, like a Japanese saw is that pulls, a Japanese plane you also pull. Uh, I bought this one uh, in the U.S. probably probably also in the 1980s. That was when I was uh, I was getting serious about boat building, and I and I had some some extra money around. <laughs> I, had, I had a pretty I had some uh, you know pretty decent paying jobs, and so I started building up the some of the kit that uh, I, I've been using ever since. Uh, but, so it's been, you know, 30 or 40 years. So, But anyway, um, if you want, uh, Japanese planes can be uh, purchased on on uh, eBay or uh, Amazon. And, um, and it's, again, some people really like the concept of pulling it as opposed to pushing it. Uh, it makes it, uh, the control much easier, makes the precision of using it uh, much nicer. So... If that appeals to you, you might you might try a Japanese plane. I, I probably bought this at a Japanese. Uh, I'm sure I did. I bought it at a Japanese uh, grocery store that sold some tools, and they had. Uh, uh, well, it's not really a grocery store. It's kind of like a. I don't know. It was like a Target or a, a Japanese. Uh, um, it had it had more than just groceries. It also had. Um, you know, pots and pans and, and, and household items and a few tools. So that's where I that's where I ended up picking this up. And again, I've used it. I like it. Um, it's not, uh, it's not, I would not consider it essential if you're building a basic kit to start building boats, but it would be useful if you, if you like it. So anyway, you might want to add that to your collection as well. The next item that I consider very important to build boats is a draw knife. This is a, it's got a, an edged blade on the inside here and uh, and you would use it with both hands and, and draw draw it towards you to peel off uh, wood that, that you want to get rid of. So um, I find these draw knives very useful. Um, it's, it's a tool I really like. I like the way you can control it, you can control the size of the chip that comes off. Um, you can take big chips or small chips. It, it seems to me it works very well with uh, <clears throat> with softer woods, you know, if you're using it on pine or fir or, you know, any of the, the um, you know, con conifer trees, the evergreen type trees, uh, with the wood that comes out of there, it really works well with. And so I find this, this tool very important for for fairing boats. So um, anyway, there's another type of tool um, that that uh, is called a spoke shape. Now this is also a plane type tool. There's a sharp blade in it, and uh, again you would draw it towards you. It's like a draw knife, but it's a little more precision, and it's also for Converting um, 
uh, square sections into round sections and getting a nice taper on that. If you look at what, I mean, the spoke shave was really a tool that came from the 1800s when they were making wooden wagon wheels. So um, if you're going to make things like, uh, oh, I don't know, uh, oars or, um, or you want to make shapes that, that transition, uh, this, is a, this is a great tool to have. Um, again, these are, these are available pretty inexpensively if you run across them. But a lot of times they need some work. And again, I'll show you how to restore one of these. I'll buy one that's old and rusty and uh, uh, maybe one of these and one of the, one of the block planes and then uh, and restore them on a future video. So you'll see how to do that. But spoke shave is a very useful tool for that. Okay, well that, that pretty much covers most of the hand cutting tools that you're going to need. Um, I also use, of course, utility knives and, and a few other things, but th that, should, that should pretty much cover it, those, those basic elements. Um, now you, you're also going to need some measuring and leveling tools, and I, I'm going to show you those while we're, while we're here as well. Um, and I, I, I use very few of those, uh, though some people uh, use others uh, I don't find the need to do that. I, I only use a couple. The first one, of course, is the uh, uh, square. And uh, this one uses it, cut, creates a 45 degree angle with this, with this blade and a 90 degree angle here. This is a 12 incher. Um, it's, uh, I, I don't know, uh, that, that's, that's, uh, and I'm trying to remember how many meters that is. That's uh, what 25.4 times 12. It's you know 30 30 millimeters, 300 millimeters, something like that. Um, in any event, uh, this is uh, this is going to be critical for uh, building, and it's mostly for establishing the square edge. That's what you do with this with this device. Now, for establishing edges that are not square. And I'm going to I'm going to have a pretty extensive uh, video on how to use this. The variable square is much is is important, and this one can be adjusted to meet your needs. And um, this is this is the only you know guys write me emails and they say, well, what angle do I cut this and that? Well, you don't. You 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 figure it out with with uh, one of these, and you and I'll show you how to use this in a future. Uh, uh, video and uh, this is this is an important tool for building boats this is a very important tool so again i'll show you how to how to you how to read a drawing and use one of these to establish uh, how you're going to go about uh, cutting those things the uh, the angles and stuff that go on the frames and and the sides of the boat and all that now in addition to this tool i also have um, a metal yardstick. This is actually four feet, but it's it's metallic. Uh, I guess I guess you guys uh, in other areas would would call them a meter stick. Uh, it's it's pretty uh, it's sturdy and uh, and the edge is nice and straight so you use it for laying out frames and such. Um, I find it, this doesn't really need to have the markings on it. I, I mark a different way. Uh, but uh, it's a good straight edge, so you could just you could just have a nice piece of aluminum that's got a nice straight edge on it, and it would work as well as one with with numbers on it. Because I don't use this for measurement; it's not very not accurate enough in my mind to really use. I just simply use a a, a tape measure. Here's mine. Stanley power lock, eight meters, 26 feet. Uh, it's got both inches and metric on it. Um, so you can build it with either. Uh, and it's, a, it's nice and sturdy. It'll, it'll reach out there uh, quite a ways before it, before it breaks. So it'll, it'll reach pretty strong, pretty far. Um, if you notice, it's got uh, a somewhat loose edge here. I don't know if you can see it, but, uh, you can see the edge moves a little bit. And that means 
for measuring inside, it's accurate, and for hooking it over the edge of a board, measuring the outside, it's accurate. It accounts for the uh, the thickness of this little hook on it. So that's uh, important to check. Now it can stretch after a while, and that's then, then you all you need to do is actually replace the tape. You can open this case and just buy a new tape and drop it in there. And it also locks in position. The lock will retract it or lock it in place and it stays put. So this is this is an important tool. So you need one of these. Um, a pretty good tape measure. So, uh, okay, well let me show you some power tools that I use. Uh, let me grab them and put them up on the bench and then we'll talk about them uh, for boat building. Okay, yeah, I'm back. Um, I'm going to start with a, a drill driver. Uh, it's, you can use it for drilling holes as well as sinking screws. Uh, this is a 20 volt uh, DeWalt. Uh, I don't know the higher the voltage, the more power it has. So just keep that in mind. Um, these are typically uh, will take up to a half inch bit. Um, and they can be adjusted for torque uh, using the using the head to adapt them for sinking screws. So um, one of these I would consider essential, particularly a, a cordless one. Uh, they come this one comes with um, batteries. Typical batteries. This one comes with two. I keep one in the charger, and then when run lows, runs low, I just drop this one in the charger and and put the other one in the drill. <laughs> and it, I've never run out of power. These things work great. This is a lithium lithium battery, so they, they're they're lightweight. These used to be pretty heavy, but they're much lighter these days with the lithium batteries. So. A drill driver is uh, really important, and you should have one absolutely. Um, the other, the other tool that I consider uh, important is a jigsaw. This here's a this is just a Sears Craftsman uh, jigsaw. It's a it's a cheesy one, um, not very. Uh, it's a corded one as well, so you have to plug it in. Um, I've been using these type of ones, uh, type of uh, um, jigsaws for, for uh, some time. I mean, for all the time I've ever built boats. Uh, you can go with the cordless model. They probably have them adapters just like they would the DeWalt. Um, I, I just use it for roughing, uh, roughing out, uh, you know, panels uh, to build on the side of the boat. Typically, I don't build huge boats myself. Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't build any of the really big ones. I start with the small ones. And so I'm usually cut it in quarter inch, uh, quarter inch ply with this and it zips right through it. I have uh, no trouble at all with it. Um, some of, some of my friends and some of my builders really like the, uh, the, the rotary, uh, the ones with the small, um, circular saws that, that would use a circular saw and, and, you know, uh, ones that are, uh, uh, how should I say, uh, a cordless circular saw, I guess that's, that's what you would call it, but with a small diameter blade. And those, that allows you to turn and cut sufficiently, um, these days. Uh, originally they, they only, they were only for cutting straight lines, but nowadays, uh, they're, they're much better for it. But I stick with the old style, uh, you know, and I'm an old timer and, uh, and I, you know, I just as soon, uh, just as soon use some of the, the basic elements that I'm kind of used to and have been doing for years and years. So anyway, that's a, that's an essential tool. Uh, the other tool that I, that I find really important is, um, and this is a, this is a pretty inexpensive, uh, one that came from, uh, um, came from, uh, Harbor Freight. It's a, a random orbital sander, um. I don't like sanding boats, particularly not after they've been epoxied. Um, so, uh, and most people don't. They don't. I don't like to gear up and cover everything and all that. But it's it's something that you got to do. So um, it's a lot easier to do if you've got a random orbital sandal than if you've got 
you know, two sheets of paper and a little block of wood that you wrap around. <laughs> you want, you're trying to clean up some, uh, some edges and stuff. So I use these quite a, quite a, uh, quite a bit. And I, um, I don't, I don't have any recommendations on brand or anything like that. I just, uh, I just buy what's available and what's, uh, you know, what I can get a good deal on and, um, and use those for uh, boat building. So anyway, I would consider that a minimum, uh, minimum amount of tools needed to make most of my boats. Now, some guys use table saws and band saws and other, you know, miter saws and, um, uh, variable angle, you know, all kinds of chop saws and things and, um, angle grinders and, you know, people use all kinds of tools, but uh, that pretty much covers it for me. Um, in addition to that, you're going to need a few other items like, uh, oh, like you'll need a good set of chisels. If I, uh, if I had my choice, I'd use a three quarter inch and an inch. Uh, chisel and um, and you're going to need a, a mallet to whack these. You don't hit them with a hammer because you'll destroy them. Um, but uh, um, there, that's that's another that's another element that you should use. Um, I also like uh, this device, which is a, f a combination of a rasp on this side and a file on this side. And I use that for doing some final smoothing. The uh, file for smoother surfaces and the rasp to cut off um, d d deeper surfaces. I, I start with a plane, and if I need just a little bit more, I'll, I'll use the rasp end of it. But, uh, um, you know, there's got a few other odds and ends that I, that I uh, uh, also tend to use uh, when building a boat, but I wouldn't consider them essential. Uh, if you start with this this group of uh, items that I just spoke with, uh, you'll be ready to build uh, most of my boats. Um, again, if you're going to build bigger ones, um, you probably you may, you may need some other some other tools. Uh, if you want to build it fast, but you know most most boat builders, you know they take their time at it. They'll take a year or something like that, and uh, and work a few hours at a time on it. And and uh, this this set of tools is plenty. So. You know, you don't really need anything specialized to do this. Um, again, we'll get into some uh, we'll get into some tools that you can build yourself. You know, that that do things like uh, uh, hold the board while you're cutting it and things like that. I'll show you how to make some specialty uh, devices like that. And oh, uh, saw horses if you if you want, you can build those yourself, or or buy them. Either way. Um, but uh, anyway, I'll get into that into some future uh, videos where we're going to start talking about uh, how to how to take these things uh, and actually build a boat with them so that we'll we'll get into more detail there. Anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed. Um, by all means, um, subscribe and like if you if you uh, enjoyed this video and want to see more. Uh, and. Um, We'll uh, see you in a short while in the next one. So talk to you soon. Thanks again.